Today's wig comes from Ronnie Hair. It will be linked below in the description box. We're going to discuss lace. I'm going to tell you everything I possibly can about the lace on wigs and what you need to know. I do feel like a lot of people are still very confused. Um, before I get into this install, I do want to say that with this wig, it is a color like a brown and beautiful highlights. However, when you first get it, of course, it's going to have that yellowish blonde to it. I did add a toner to the hair to take some of the yellowness, but overall the hair by itself is gorgeous. I just wanted to make sure that it meet my complexion and this is a 20 inch 13 by 6 cap let's talk about what types of lace there are originally there was a lace called french lace which was just the regular thick lace which that lace still do kind of exist in beauty supply stores at first lace wigs were made with it but now a lot of companies have upgraded so right now we have the option to have swiss lace also has been out for a very long time and then hg lace which is the more supposedly thinner lace now in my opinion if you know what you're doing with wigs you can blend any type of lace you just have to add a bit more detail into your wig install to me personally if i had to choose what a beginner would have compared to a person with experience i would feel like a beginner could use the hd lace and get a flawless install more so than a person that's, that has experience in blending lace because a person who has experience with blending lace can blend any type of lace there are people that have lots of wigs and still don't know how to blend lace or they just can't get it to work which is understandable also because it, i feel like it does take a bit of practice no matter what type of lace you have now the only lace that I don't like that I don't see too often is that thick white looking lace like no reason to even have that type of lace on any wig to be honest unless someone just wants a cheaper wig that they can play with and kind of work it out but I think a lot of times people like myself and others have experience in wigs is because we had it a little bit harder so we had to learn different techniques to actually blend our lace whereas now you all are kind of handed all the pre-plucked hairlines and visible lace this lace right here is swiss lace and i think swiss lace is very durable it's not going to rip like hd lace hd lace i don't feel like you will get a long wear out of your wig if that makes sense because the lace is too thin it's one of those lace that you pull out for special occasions and you have to be very delicate with it now with ronnie hair and a lot of companies i deal with they use the swiss lace now well ronnie hair definitely uses the swiss lace as you can see and the swiss lace is stronger but it's a bit more invisible and also let's be very aware that most companies everything is going to vary from company to company so one company can call their regular lace hd lace and another company will call their hd lace and it be real hd or be real swiss so when you're just shopping for laces it's best to instead of just always going by the words on the site because a lot of times they are keywords for trending topics it's best to actually see the wig itself sometimes you can request pictures from companies i don't know if you guys know that you can request you can email them request pictures of you know hey i want to see what this wig look like and some of them will do it for you shit i've always had companies that have done it if i ask but to be honest quality lace will be thin it will be soft if you want to know the difference go to a beauty supply store and feel some of the lace that's on most of those wigs there it's hard and I've actually <laughs> purchased a beauty supply store wig and have noticed that the lace is irritating to the skin very much so like with this lace this lace is very soft as you can see but it's still very durable so i can pull it like this and as you can see it's strong enough to go through something but it's not too weak and it's comfortable on the skin and that's kind of why you pay a little bit more for Swiss lace from like this company because their quality is actually really good when it comes to the lace. Now let's talk about caps because I think that is an important topic to talk about. I get questions about cap sizes and whatnot. I mean, I get this question like, what cap size are you? And my head size, I can wear a small or a medium size cap. My head is between a medium and small, so I can wear both. When people are asking me this question, it's almost to kind of determine what they could wear but even if my head size is the same as yours there's still going to be a lot of differences so even if it fits me that doesn't mean it's going to fit you so the best thing you can do for yourself is to get yourself a measuring tape 
a soft measuring tape like this is what you need to measure the circumference of your head. Of course you use the inches on this and you can measure everything you need from temple to temple, nape to forehead, all that. And that way you will know what size to get. Now if I can be 100% honest with you because I feel like it's the, it, there's a lot of miscommunication for wig wearers. To be honest, my cap size never fit perfectly in the back. I don't have a perfect cap size that just fits to the T. And I really don't worry unless I need it for a special occasion and I want a full lace wig, meaning no wefting and I want to glue it all the way around. But for the most part, when it comes to glueless wigs, when it comes to 13 by six, five by seven, a lot of times it don't fit 100% perfect for me. A lot of you be thinking that, oh yeah, because her wig look good, it fits 100% perfect. No, like I still have like lace hanging right here, but it's comfortable and it doesn't bother me. If you're thinking that with these 13 by six wigs, oh my lace is like, I mean, it's not bulgy, of course, but as you can see, like when I pull that strap in the back, it bunches up right here but I can still work with it. It's not going to be a perfect fit unless you send your measurements from all angles of your head. And also a lot of times people say, well, they never have my cap size. If I have a bigger head or extra small head, it's because the most standard head is 21 to 22.5 when it comes to circumference. So that means that they make stock for wigs that, that are more likely to be purchased. And anything above or below that number is considered a custom cap. Some of them will do it for you if you email them and others they won't. You just have to ask the company. Okay, let's talk about cutting this lace. This is the next question. Everyone wants to know, do you cut it all the way back or do you leave lace? Now, I think the biggest mistake y'all was told is to leave lace. And that's because a lot of you really don't know how to blend the lace. When people tell or stylists or whatever, or whoever tells you to leave lace, it's because in their minds, they're very advanced. So they like, okay, use this glue, use this spray to be easy to blend. But that's not always the case for beginners. This is how I cut my wigs. I always go back to the hairline all the way to the hairline even though that i can blend lace a lot of times if you're leaving a half an inch of lace like if you're leaving like this much lace right here like if you was to leave this here guess what's going to happen when you spray product on the lace and it dry the lace is going to be visible sometimes and that's why you guys aren't getting the look that you want some people will even be like oh well this lace isn't like what this person got that's not the case I would honestly say cut the hairline all the way back. Matter of fact, I just had a conversation with my daughter about this. Like right now, like all you see is the hairline. Yes, you still get this line, but you can smooth hairs to recreate the area so it won't look like just, you know, that tape type of line. The lace blends, and I did spray lace tint on it, so not blending 100%. We'll get to that in a second. But you want to cut that hairline all the way back. Let's talk products glue, wig melting sprays, all of that stuff. If you have a hairline like this on a glueless wig, like right now, if you want the best look, you do not need to add any type of glue. It's glueless. And I feel like a lot of time your lace is showing because you are putting too much product when you are gluing it down. So it's not the lace that's visible, it's the products, the foundation powders, the concealers that's caking up and showing the lace. Like it's working against the purpose for some of you and I don't think you realize that. That's why I always tell anybody who follow me here, I always tell you less is more. People be like, how do I clean my lace? And they could be using any something like um, the melting spray. And I'd be like, well, what do you need to clean? Why is it white? Like, this don't turn white at all. But if you're using got to be and all that, when you use too much, when it's happening, it turns into like this white cast around your hairline or it makes your lace so hard. So you go from having a really good lace to now the product making your lace very hard, which causes it to be visible. So I think if you guys stop going for the hold and start going for the melt, then you will understand that the lace that you have when you're buying, especially if you buy this wig from Ronnie Hair or any wig that is Swiss lace from Ronnie Hair, it will blend. Like you see me do Super B wigs and you see how melted that wig was. And in that video, when I've had the wig pulled up and I had the parting and the hairline, and I even showed a picture of myself in daylight, was no tricks to that. It's just I use less product. Y'all did not see me cake on piles of glue or anything. Literally use the bare minimum 
And I think that's what y'all need to do to get the look that you're going for. Either you want the hold or you want the look. No matter what you do, a wig is always going to look like a wig. And I mean, I mean, I agree and disagree at the same time. But let's be honest, a lot of people over the past few years have been getting online screaming, so what is a wig? Like, I guess if I can just say, be cautious on who you're copying when it comes to your wig install comes to the look of it because whatever their belief is is how your wig is gonna look and even if you have been following me for a long time and you still can't get it right then you got to figure out for yourself like what are you not doing for you that works with your head like, i see a lot of companies make really great wigs and people still can't even you know get it to look natural i mean some of you just like to watch the people that's here to entertain more so than teach. So just be cautious of who you're taking it tips from. So just remember that when these companies say that it's a do nothing wig, you can literally do nothing. You don't have to bleach it. You don't have to pluck it. You don't even sometimes have to create baby hairs. Just remember it may still look like a wig until you put your own personal touches to it. And this middle part is not working for me like I want it to. So I'm going to switch it to a side part. All right, I think I've styled this wig enough. As you can see, just switching the parting, I feel like it looks so much better. I just wanted to give you guys those tips. This wig will be linked below in the description box. This hair is absolutely gorgeous. Like